What is up guys? Welcome back for another metagame of the month. We are back with return today. I did say I wanted to do uh, I wanted to do to, to, to. <laughs> I wanted to do Mega Beedrill uh, on a team and we are using Mega Beedrill now. I don't have protect on this set because I'm expecting it to outspeed uh, s slower threats that things that don't have priority be able to go for a fell stinger and revenge basically slower pokemon with the fell stinger adaptability of course boosting that uh we are going to go with uh swarm uh beforehand or maybe even sniper is sniper better i think sniper is better uh we'll go fell stinger fell stinger is base 102 of course u-turn for momentum poison jab and drill run to be able to hit the likes of heatran ground types in general i could pr pack protect over drill run but i don't think it's worth it we do have a scarf magnet zone this is our uh check to uh, Mega Pinsir, we are able to outspeed it, knock it out with the Thunderbolt, or Volt Switch around on it, it's fine. I have 16 HP EVs because the speed is enough to outspeed base 3, well, speed that hits 353, such as Thunderous. We are able to outspeed that, and uh, the 16 HP allows me to live 2 plus 2 Adamant Faints from Mega Pinsir. Uh, unless rocks are up, of course, then it's a harder task, but other than that, we should be able to live them. I have HP Fire in the first slot because I want something to deal with the blade, uh, something that can almost knock it out. Uh, it has a chance to after rocks. Uh, it's a very, very small chance, but regardless. Then we have Volcanion. This is our answer to Azumarill. We can switch into A Aqua Jet any day of the week. I'm actually packing a really cool set. Uh, negative Spit F. We have a Rash Nature here with Flame Charge. Uh, once again, that same 260, uh, 236 speed, able to outspeed the likes of Thunderous after a Flame Charge and Fire Blast, Steam Eruption, and Sludge Bomb to be able to hit Azumarill back. Uh, basically covers almost everything with this set. It's very nice leftovers, of course, for longevity. Then we have a Fake Out Normal Gem Boosting um, Hitmonlee over here. Fake Out hits base 102, give it a Normal Gem, basically hits base 140, uh, roughly that and uh or 135 <coughs> 135 136-ish very powerful fake out on the first turn with the unburden we're able to outspeed everything else after this is our rapid spinner to support beedrill and, and volcanion of course uh two pokemon that are weak to rocks then we have landorus which is our own rock setter i have rock tomb in the first slot because i think it's probably the best move you can run it's able to slow down switches uh able to hit them harder with eq i have a lot of attack investment on this set uh, it's a more defensive variant with the max HP and the uh, positive, the impish nature, 76 uh, EVs, and then 12 in speed. I like to hit 221 to outspeed uh, certain variants of Rotom, other Landorus, and things like that. And finally, we have a Rotom. I wanted a secondary check to uh, Pinsir, as well as a secondary check to Azumarill. So I decided to bring Rotom Wash Volt Switch in the first slot. Uh, it is uh, base 100, base 110 Hydro Pump, Will-O-Wisp, and Pain Split, basically a... Uh, very standard Rotom Wash, so let's see what we can do with this team. I had one test game with it. It did very, very well. It's very good defensively. My opponent just has a Mega Beatra. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I'm going to lead off with Landorus, and uh, we're just going to click Rock Tomb right here and knock out his Beatra. <laughs> oh my god. This is the best first game I could have asked for, guys. I don't know if I'm even going to include this, to be honest. It depends on how quick he clicks his move. Uh, he just goes for Fell Stinger. He's able to boost his attack. Oh, no, it doesn't even boost. I guess it's only if it kills. GG, my friend. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Why doesn't that work? Hold on. What does Fell Stinger do? Raises user's attack by two if it KOs the target. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so it has to KO. Uh, so that's good to know. It's good that we found that out early. I was, I'm was i really glad my opponent was using a Mega Beedrill because I probably wouldn't have known that. I thought I would have thought that it would have just gotten the immediate plus two. So, very nice there. Uh, Beedrill is a menace at plus two, dude. Like, it has 790 attack, which rivals Mega Metacham, and it has adaptability. That's ridiculous. That's so stupid. <laughs> why is that even allowed? Uh, <laughs> I guess because of all the priority, that's why it's not banned. Because, um... Otherwise, like, Mega Beedrill would be too ridiculous. Like, look at my opponent's team. Uh, other than the Blade and uh, Talonflame, Beedrill destroys him at plus two. Like, it absolutely runs through his team. Even the multi-scale on Dragonite can't even save him. Like, it's it's going to be very tough. So we do have a the Blade check, of course, being uh, Magnezone. Uh, can Volt Switch on it the first time. Uh, it'll take a lot from Shadow Sneak, but then I can bring in my Volcanion and knock it out. So that's always nice. Uh, I do see the Deancey leading potentially. Uh, that thing can have Draining Kiss, which kind of scares me. <sighs> uh, it's basically equivalent to Moonblast at that point. Uh, I'm going to lead off with Rotom. 
because it leads off the best against the Deancey and the Landorus as well, so that's kind of nice. Uh, we will be able to rapid spin at some point during this game, so I kind of just want to fire off a Hydro Pump right here. He's going to go for a knockoff that's very strong. He crits us. Uh, we will be able to knock out... Oh, no, not knock out the Landorus. Okay. Uh, crit did... Hold on a second. If he has this in his first slot, it's still base 100 right now. That's really scary. Uh, yeah, I have to keep this Rotom. I got to paint split it up later. Uh, just going to go into Landorus. He's going to go for Stealth Rocks. That's absolutely fine. Uh, and we are going to get up rocks. I'm just going to ignore players and spectators. It's going to go for a knockoff. It's going to do a lot. Uh, we should be faster than him because we did go first on the stealth rocks. And Rock Tomb should be able to finish him off right here. So goodbye, Lanaris. And uh, we'll see what my opponent decides to bring out here. Uh, luckily, we got up the rocks early. So that's good. Very good for the Talonflame. Great for the Dragonite. Uh, and it's also going to help us put the blade into range of a uh, hidden power fire from Magnazone. Now, I could just go straight into Magnazone here. Don't get me wrong. That's probably a very good play, actually. Uh, he is going to protect, I feel like. There's no reason not to. I'm just going to go hard into Magnazone, actually. Yeah, this is fine. As my opponent goes for a protect. Awesome. Okay. So I'm expecting him to have Earth Power, however, we are Scarfed, and I do not see a very good switch into a Flash Cannon here, unless, of course, is the Blade has Pursuit. Then that could be an issue, but I am just going to fire off a Flash Cannon again. He does not have a very good switch, nor to a Thunderbolt, no, nor to a Flash Cannon, so I can basically go for that here. Um, he has to expect me to be Scarfed. He can't, he can't think of anything else, right? Like, why would I go hard into this otherwise? Okay, we're able to knock out the Deancey. That's very nice. Uh, I want to keep this for the Deblade. Actually, he goes hard into the, the Deblade. Um, he's going to go for a Swords Dance right here, I feel like. Uh, can Volcanion take that after rocks? Hold on a second. Um, Deblade at plus one. I just want to see it plus one. If Volcanion can take a Shadow Sneak from a base 102 move. Yeah, it can. It can after rocks. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's great to know, uh, which means I'm going hard into Landorus. I don't really need Landorus for anything else. Uh, being Scarfed on Magnezone is really going to help us. He is going to go for the Swords Dance. He has to attack me here. I'm just going to go for Earthquake. Uh, he's going to be able to knock us out, but now we can go into Volcanion and fire off, hopefully land this Fire Blast. The Shadow Sneak is going to do a lot, clearly, at plus one, uh, but it's not going to be able to take us out, and that's the important thing, so. Whew! All right. <laughs> We're able to, uh, to live this on. Wait, what? Why did that knock me out? How did... I calced for base 102. That should never take me out. Unless he's not Evil Light? Um, yeah, that shouldn't... Oh, damn. This Volcanion set has a ton of HP. Ooh, that's bad. Does he just knock out my whole team now? I think he does. Okay, so that was a huge miscalculation on my part. Um... Magnezone? Can you live this? <laughs> Hopefully, buddy. Uh, yeah, that's definitely taking me out. Well, maybe not, actually. Uh, that was a roll to knock me out uh, from Adamant plus one. So let's see how much it does to Magnezone. Magnezone. The problem is my other form of priority can't hit this to Blade, which is really annoying. Uh, we're not choice specs. HP Fire would not knock him out anyway. Uh, Magnezone. Choice Scarf. Uh, with a base 102 hidden power fire uh does 79 to 94 his shadow sneak does 76 to 90 which means it has a chance to knock me out uh it does not right there and we are able to get off a lot of damage on this to blade but not enough unfortunately so that's gonna pretty much spell doom for us um i'm just gonna switch out into rotom hoping that he thinks that i have some some, some form of priority on him only but i don't uh, I think him only is going to go straight down to this. I'm just going to click knockoff. He is going to shadow sneak again, and that's going to be GG. So we're going to forfeit that one. Luckily, we're only nine minutes in, so we can get a couple more games. I really thought Volcanion could live, but not off the rock. So I got to be very careful with uh, with the blade setting up on me. I need to make sure it's uh, it's a little bit lower so that HP Fire can knock it out. All right, so my opponent has a Mega Pinsir, which we checked relatively well. I'm curious to see what first moves he's going to have on Ferrothorn and Skarmory, because those things... Well, I mean, he doesn't deal with Volcanion all too well, to be honest. Uh, especially that his defensive walls are both weak to it. One of them quad. Um, so I'm actually just going to lead here with... I 
think him only is a pretty good lead. Honestly. Uh, so is Ferrothorn. Uh, not Ferrothorn, Rotom. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna lead off with him only because I don't expect him to lead with either one of his steel types, just to, for starters, uh, because I do have a Magnezone, so he could instantly get them trapped if he did that. Um, I don't see him leading with Gardevoir. In fact, I see him only ever leading with Garchomp, just because of Magnezone. So I'm gonna lead off with Lando. Lando has a decent lead matchup. If he wants to lead with Skarmory or a Ferrothorn, I can immediately switch out into my um, my Magnezone. He doesn't have a Ghost on his team, which means I can Rapid Spin against anything. I can go Fake Out Rapid Spin on anything on his team, uh, except for Pinsir, of course, because of Faint. So I gotta watch out for that. But other than that, we should be good to go. I'm really hoping that Beedrill can put in a little bit of work here. It doesn't look like because of Skarmory. But after that Skarmory is gone, like, other than Pinsir, I destroy his entire team. So, he has to be very weary of that. Luckily, we have nice support for Beedrill. Uh, I just have to... my The bane of my existence in this metagame is... Uh, is the Blade. Like, I just can't find a way to deal with it. I guess it's just one of those mons. Uh, it's kind of like the, the Kirim Black of this metagame. It's really hard to switch into, and if it sets up, it's pretty much game over. So, gotta be very careful with that. My opponent's taking quite a while to choose his lead, so I'm actually going to pause it, guys, and we'll be right back. Alright, guys, so my opponent decided that um, it was... Uh, my team was too scary, so he he just... Uh, he's going to be inactive for the entire time. Uh, we did already get another game, though, and my opponent has a Furfra. This is going to be cool. Um, very threatening Pokemon. Uh, base 100 Scalds from Keldeo are very scary. Uh, we also have the Ice Shard. Uh, I didn't prep too heavily for Weavile, but I do have him only, so it should be fine. His Mega should be Metacham as well, and we gotta just watch out for Talonflame. We do have two, two decent checks to it, so let's see. Um, I like I like just leading with Rotom against this guy, because he does have the Aggron, uh, the Talonflame, and the uh, the Keldeo as well. So uh, I'm actually just gonna throw out a Wisp here, get this thing burned. As he goes for Stealth Rocks, that's absolutely fine. We do have a Rapid Spinner, which I may just Volt Switch into directly here. Just to get rid of these rocks, threaten him out with the high jump kick. He might want to switch into uh, something like Talonflame on the high jump kick, which would be nice. He can't really switch anything else in. Maybe Metacham. That's about it. Uh, but we will Volt Switch here. Nothing he really goes for can threaten me. Um, like, nothing he switches into can really damage me too much. Because if he goes into Talonflame, he's going to lose it to this powerful Volt Switch. Um, he actually goes for a Frile. Okay, that's fine. We're going to get off this 40... Wow. 45%. All right. Um, I'm just going to go for a Rapid Spin here, I think. I mean, I don't lose anything by faking out, but... Yeah, let's go for Fake Out. It'll do a good amount of damage. He does have Fur Coat, of course. Uh, that's still going to do 45%. That's really nice. Uh, it does have the Leftovers, and we will go for a Rapid Spin right here. And get rid of the Rocks as he goes for a Rest. That's fine by me. Uh, we do have the High Jump Kick online. And I'm going to click that immediately. As my opponent switches out into Metacham, who is going to take a lot from this. 59%, very nice. He does have Fake Out of his own, and that would potentially knock us out. So I kind of want to go into Landorus on this thing. Uh, at the same time, then I just have to switch right back out because of Ice Punch. And I mean, regardless, Fake Out's going to do a lot, so... Maybe I just stay in on this. I don't think his Fake Out knocks me out, necessarily. Hold on. Metacham... All out attacker. Give it a base 102. Fake out. Against Hitmonlee. It might. It might. Uh, Reckless. Uh, oh yeah, it does. <laughs> okay, we're going straight into Landorus. Wow, I can't lose Hitmonlee just yet because of the uh, the Furfra. I need something to hit it hard. Okay, so his fake out is not his most powerful move. What is it? Huh. Well, I'm going to switch out directly into Rotom, fearing the Ice Punch, as he does have it. Awesome, okay. I uh, should be able to take a high jump kick, no problem, from this range. And Volt Switch should actually be able to knock him out, because it's base 100. So, he is going to switch out directly into his Furfrau. Uh, your Metacham is no longer a switch into my Hitmonlee, though. And actually, I can just go into Beedrill here. Yeah, alright, so he's going to forfeit... Uh, I could have gone into Beedrill there and gone for a Fell Stinger. He might have been able to switch into Aggron, but that just gives me a U-turn, so it doesn't really accomplish too much. Uh, just U-turn right out into Landorus, get, get up my rocks, and then his team is extremely threatened, so uh, that's a good game right there. 
that fake out did so much that's for a coat that's insane all right so we got the same guy again <laughs> hey again uh so i'm just gonna pause it guys we'll get this over with and uh we'll play again all right we're back if you guys want to know how i finished that game i just went magna zone and hp fired twice he had a jirachi this time <laughs> I led with Rotom, Will-O-Wisp. He went for Charge Beam, which was kind of cool. Uh, and then I just full switched out into Magna Zone, clicked HP Fire twice, and that was it. So let's try to get a real game. Uh, I'm assuming there's not too many people on if we got that guy twice. Uh, let's take a look. Active battles, give me returned. Yeah, there's only seven battles going on, but I mean, we should get some, get one at some point. I probably shouldn't have unpaused it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll just pause it again, guys. Be right back. All right, we finally got one, and my opponent has a Clotzer, and that's scary, because Water Pulse is base 100. Whoa. Why didn't I think of that? That's brilliant. I might try that out. <laughs> All right, so uh, I feel like I feel like Beedrill is actually a really good lead against this guy, because I outspeed pretty much everything. Uh, okay, he just leads straight with Pinsir. Uh, I can't really stay in here. Let's just go hard Rotom. Uh, if he sets up an SD, it's fine. We can live a plus two close combat. He does just go for faint. That's absolutely fine. This is a free Volt Switch for me. Uh, he might just go for close combat, but then Magnezone just comes in. He doesn't have a ground type on his team, which is nice. Uh, he does just go straight into Umbreon. So this is going to give me a free U-turn right here with my Mega Beedrill. And he has to act accordingly, so... Uh, it's all up to him. He might want to go into Tentacruel. That wouldn't be a bad play at all. Uh, I do have Drill Run on that, on this for that. Uh, this might actually be a game where Beedrill puts in a lot of work. Uh, let's just U-turn. That's a crit on his Pinsir. Very nice. We'll go right back out into Rotom, and we will Volt Switch again. We will start this Volt Turning Core that is Mega Beedrill plus Rotom. So very nice. Uh, Aziz is just going to go right back into Umbreon. That's fine. He's not gaining anything from this, honestly. This is just, it's its tearing away at his defensive wall and his main sweeper. So, he's really not gaining anything. He loses his Umbreon right there, perfect. Uh, we'll go hard into, I feel like Magnazone is probably my best play because it is uh, Scarfed. So we outspeed everything on his team. Uh, except if he's Scarfed Titar. No fell Stinger. <laughs> I'm saving it. <laughs> Alright, so he does go T-Tar, so this might be Scarfed. Uh, I'm actually just going to go hard into Landorus and get up my rocks. Uh, hopefully, he goes for an EQ. He goes for an Incinerate, which is actually base 100. That's kind of nice. That's a cool move uh, to be packing. Uh, I'm just going to go for rocks right here. He might go into Azu. He actually goes straight into Pinsir, which is fine. We can live any hit, and I'm just going to go for a Rock Tomb here. It'll be able to knock him out. And... Uh... He actually goes for bulk up. That doesn't matter. This rock tomb is base 100. It is easily going to take out Pinsir, and uh, now he's not playing uh, with a full team anymore. That's that's what happens when you get caught in a volt turning core. Uh, sometimes, guys. So try not to let that happen to you. Uh, he's gonna go Clotzer. So we're basically going to lose a Pokemon right here. I don't know if he's Scarfed or if he's just max speed, but I kind of want to test that, and I'm gonna go for EQ right here. We're able to get off a lot of damage on this Clotzer, and he's going to go for Dragon Pulse, which is not going to be able to do enough. I actually wanted him to knock me out, though, because then Beedrill's Fell Stinger would have been able to come in. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's just go for Stealth Rocks, let him knock us out, and then we'll go Fell Stinger. I already told him that I have it, so I might as well just go for it here. Uh, if he goes into Azu, we do have a response, so... Uh, we're gonna get the plus two from Felstinger. Finally, Beedrill doing something. He's gonna go into Azu, obviously. I'm just gonna switch out into Volcanion. I'm gonna try to have Beedrill win this game. Let's see if we can pull it off. Uh, he's gonna go for a knockoff, actually, so great play on my opponent's part. That looks like banded damage. Uh, I'm just gonna go for a Sludge Bomb here. He is gonna switch out into his Tentacruel, so great play. Um, I'm just going to click Steam Eruption, I think, is fine, because that was a resisted non-stab hit. Uh, he's going to go for a Rapid Spin. I'm not sure why, because at this point, it doesn't really do anything. And... Hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's go for a Flame Charge. He goes for Acid Spray and knocks us out immediately because it's base 100. Gotcha. Okay, that's cool. That's cool little tech right there. 
Uh, I, but I think he's banned at Azu, which means that Rotom still deals with him. I'm gonna go into Magnazone here because we do outspeed. Uh, and I'm just going to throw out a Volt Switch. He might switch out into his Titar and conserve his Tentacruel. That would be fine by me. That just means my Beedrill comes right back in and U-turns again. Uh, this is going to be a very powerful hit right here or not. Whoa, is this thing AV? What the heck? Alright, uh, let's go into Beedrill. And we're going to click... This is base 100, this is base 70. So Fell Stinger should actually do more. Let's click it. Let's see. We get the knockout. Titar is down. Um, <laughs> that's so strong, man. That's ridiculous. Uh, he does go Azu. Uh, the thing here is that if he clicks an offensive move, uh, Magnus, like, if he doesn't lock himself into the, uh, into Aqua Jet, then Magnazone comes in and Volt switches. Uh, and if he does lock himself into an offensive, uh, well, like, a non-priority move, uh, if he locks himself into Aqua Jet, then I just go into Rotom and I Volt switch, so that's fine. Uh, I think I'm just going to go for the jab. He is going to go for Aqua Jet. He's going to knock out our Beedrill, unfortunately. I wanted it to do a little bit more, but it's fine. We'll go into uh, Rotom here, uh, and we will Volt Switch. It will be able to knock out this Azumarill from this range. Uh, and then I think Hitmonlee cleans up. So Hitmonlee might actually get the uh, the thumbnail with that powerful fake out on the Fur Frow. Yeah, he, did, he, is, he definitely is banded. This Volt Switch is going to be able to put him in Sand range, which... Thank goodness for that. I'm gonna go into uh, Hitmonlee, uh, and now Fake Out should be able to do the job, and that should be GG. He's very weak to uh, to Beedrill actually. Like the Volt Turning Core between Rotom and Beedrill, like he, he just loses to that. I'm just gonna go for a powerful Fake Out. It's gonna put him in burn range, and that is going to be GG. And that's where I think I'm actually gonna end the episode, guys. We're gonna have it a little bit shorter than yesterday's, uh, because I know that 30-minute episodes or 34-minute episodes are not exactly what you guys want to see. So uh, we'll keep it to 22. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, if you want to see more uh, random tiers like this, random metas, let me know in the comments section down below. Leave a like for me; it really helps out on the video on the channel. Uh, and uh, subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> Ciao.